Hey y'all, it's Betsy and Biddy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another garden video. So today we are talking all about milkweed. You guys know that I have been working on my Milkweed for Monarchs series where I am trying my hardest to grow milkweed for the big, beautiful butterflies known as the Monarch. They of course visit us here in sunny Alabama. Last year, I planted some swamp milkweed, which is native to my area. And I even seeded quite a bit of it trying to grow my own, but it has been hot, hot, hot this year. And despite seeding, a lot and planting a lot almost all of the milkweed that i planted has disappeared died wilted given up the ghost run for the hills it is no longer with us which is very sad now i have 500 seeds so i can start more than my share i will start some more but in an effort to have some milkweed before fall when it will go dormant and die back to the ground and come back next year, which is when I planted my first milkweed last year and it's done beautifully. I found a few tropical milkweeds at my local nursery. I actually took a butterfly gardening class recently and I will be doing a whole video on what I learned. Um, but I am in Alabama zone 8B. And so while you want to plant a native milkweed, the plop, problem, the problem with tropical milkweed is that for the most part, it will stay green. It will bloom a long time, not just in our warmer climates, but as things have been crazy with climate change, a lot of Northern states have been growing tropical milkweed and it's been staying green and flowering long after it's time for the butterflies to go to sleep for the winter. It is messing with their natural overwintering population and sleep cycles, um, which are apparently very important. Everyone knows you need your beauty sleep and apparently the same is true for butterflies. I don't understand all the ins and outs. This is just kind of what I learned in my butterfly class, but it does make sense. Birds migrate, makes sense that butterflies would have a hibernation period of some type as well, since they obviously cannot withstand colder temperatures, especially in the northern climates. So places like Florida and California, where your tropical milkweed can literally stay in bloom year round, just confuses the butterflies, messes with them completely. And so the overall consensus is if tropical milkweed is an annual in your zone, or you are willing to cut it back when it is in full bloom to kind of give that false sleeping overwintering time for the monarchs, you just shouldn't plant it. Now at my butterfly class, they said in our zone 8B in Alabama, at the very least in our area, it is treated like an annual, which means it will die back when we get close to winter. I will have to plant more next year and therefore it is safe for our butterflies. If we're having an unnaturally warm year and it's not dying back at the same rate as my swamp milkweed, which is a uh, native plant to our area, then I will sacrifice the blooms and I will cut it back because the whole point of growing milkweed is to help the monarchs. So if we are planting milkweed that is detrimental to them, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. At least from what I understand, I'm not an expert. I've taken exactly one class. <laughs> And of course, done a lot of online research, but anyone can get a uh, WebMD and that's not great either. So either way, I have three new silky red milkweed plants, which are technically a tropical milkweed. We're going to go plant them over in our little milkweed patch. Our one little milkweed plant, our swamp milkweed that is growing is not thriving because it's by itself. In order to really host butterflies, you need seven or eight milkweed plants. Otherwise your one plant will just die back and with nothing else to um, help sustain it, it will not regrow at the right rate. So I was only able to get three more. Hopefully I'll be able to get my hands on some more shortly. I'd like to have at least seven or eight plants for the season. And if not, we'll keep adding as the seasons progress, but Cross your fingers, we can start some more swamp milkweed. That's the real goal. So 
let's go ahead, stop yapping, go around the corner. If you have any more knowledge on tropical milkweed, leave it down below because I am, I am very intrigued by all of this butterfly knowledge and I want to know all the things. So we're going to go ahead and plant this tropical milkweed and see how it does. Hope it does not wilt and die like our swamp milkweed seedlings did. That was very sad. Let's go. All right, y'all. So you can see I have my original swamp milkweed. These three are our silky red milkweed. Dun, dun, dun. This was the larger can, and then I have the two smaller ones. And to me, even though they're labeled with the same name, the, uh, the leaves look different. So not 100% sure. When I look up silky red milkweed, this is what I find. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plant them like this with my two matching ones here, the bigger one in the back. And then I can always add something in front, filling in with more milkweed as I find it. I am starting more of the swamp milkweed. So hopefully eventually we'll be able to fill in the whole area with the proper types. But for now, I'm gonna hurry and get these planted because y'all, it is supposed to literally rain like in 20 minutes. It's been raining for the last four hours. We had a break. So I'm gonna try to get these in so maybe they can benefit from the rain and not wilt and die like the last round. All right, I am a thorough mess, but we got all the milk we planted. Looks great. It's supposed to rain every day this week, so say a little prayer that it will not wilt. I'm going to come out and check on it. You know I have the, uh, the drip tube here, the quarter-inch drip tube, but the second this starts wilting, I am going to pop an individual emitter to each plant because perhaps it just needed more water. And then we will go from there, but... While any form of tropical milkweed is not my first choice, I want milkweed. And if I have to treat it as an annual, that will be a decent solution to at least have more this year. You can see my one little plant is just getting eaten. Um, <laughs> not sure if he's getting eaten by good bugs or bad bugs, but if the monarchs can find these, one plant will definitely not be enough. So. Let's hope that four will help and I will keep seeding more in an effort to increase my patch. Eventually, I still need to compost this whole area and close the air conditioner and just make this whole little spot prettier. But this is the first step. 
milkweed for monarchs. Y'all know I'm trying. So cross your fingers that these babies do really well. I will see y'all in the next video. And if you want to go back to the beginning, check out my entire milkweed for monarchs series and everything that I've done, including planting this guy and growing on seeds and just the whole shebang. I will link the playlist right here. Bye y'all.